Who wins this fight and why? Man, it's a, it's, this is a tricky one. You know, I think uh, a lot of people might still lean towards Usman for how that fight was going until that knockout. We all know that was a, a crazy knockout and it was a shock to us all, but it was a shock because we, we know why. You know, uh, Usman was doing good. But I still remember that first round, you know, and, the, you know, does the, you know, the altitude. Remember, they were talking about fighting at a higher altitude and, uh, and that was, he was saying it was, it was a tyranny mountain and things like that. I wonder if that's, that's true or if he even believes that. Because his confidence with uh, Leon I'm talking about, his confidence is going to be through the roof knowing that he had a good first round. Remember, he took Usman down. You know, had a good first round and he still got the KO when he thought he was tied. He goes, I won't get tied this time. I'm not fighting at altitude. All that type of stuff. So I feel like this is a... I'm almost 50-50 on it, even though uh, I know that Usman was doing so great leading into that, that KO. But I think, uh, I think Leon uh, can definitely uh, get the job done. Well, just on that, you could argue that Leon only won two of the eight rounds that these guys have fought. Rob, what do you think? Yeah, it's... Um... <laughs> It, it, it's, it's funny because we need to see how Usman comes back from that loss. Yeah. How he comes back from that last fight because he was winning most, the majority of that fight until he switched off. And, and in the fight game, you can't switch off for half a second. How does that play into Usman's return against um, Leon Edwards? Mm. Does, it, does Usman pull back a little bit? And, and, you know, take his foot off the accelerator a little bit to, to regulate his cardio and, and pressure moving into the later round so he doesn't reach that fatigue stage where he got caught with the kick? Or does he hesitate a little bit more? Yeah. Worrying about the traps that Leon might or might not be setting up. Like, is he gun shy? Exactly. Yeah. You know, we can, we can see that because it, the fact of the matter is, once you've been caught, it plays on your head until you get through the fight like that and this has come from my own experience with Adesanya, that second fight. Right. It, it, it plays in your, your mind until you get through that trial once again. It's interesting, before this fight, the last one that is, we were heralding Kamaru Usman. We were having him up there with George St. Pierre as one of the greatest welterweights of all time. If he loses to Rocky for a second time, is his legacy tarnished? Oh, I wouldn't say it's a tarnished. You know, mm. he's done some uh, great things in the division. You know yeah. what I mean? Like... Uh, that's the thing, though, right? Everyone uh, quickly forgets, you know, which is, which is unfortunate. But, I mean, he is still uh, right there as uh, one of the best, you know what I mean? And he's, uh, he's definitely going to turn up. But uh, as Rob was saying, that is a, a major factor that, that you need to... It needs to come... You know, it's, it's a conversation we need to have, is the fact that, you know, even when you know you're fighting a, a striker that's looking for the KO, that's going to make you hesitate because you're worried about that. Then when someone's already caught you... Mm. Uh, you know, that's going to play in your mind even a little bit more. So that's, that's why, you know, with all these things coming in, whether it is altitude, uh, he already got the, the KO win, and then, like, you know, all, all these things come into play. And that's why I still feel like this is going to be a very competitive fight. No matter how good I think Usman is, I think a lot of these other things come into play. No, and you're right, because people can forget Leon Edwards' is 11 fights unbeaten, Rob. Usman is one of the best welterweights who have ever lived. Yes. Like, that, that is... Absolute fact. He can do it all. He's a powerhouse of the game. He's got toughness, grit, determination, cardio. He's got stand-up skills. He's got top-tier wrestling. He knows how to grind people out. He, he is one of the best welterweights to have ever, to have ever lived. Um, the fight against Leon Edwards, it's a fight at the end of the day. He zigged when he should have zagged. You know, it, it can be as simple as that. Obviously, our job here is to look into it and dissect it as much as possible. But maybe... He just made a mistake and took his head the wrong way <laughs> once. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. That's literally all it takes. So I'm very interested to see how the, how the fight goes. I think maybe, maybe we're over, over, over speaking on, on all the, the mental things that he might be going through, um, might, have, might have taken into the second fight. But in reality, he was winning you know, the majority of that fight. As, as you were saying, it was obviously that one second that, that can just change uh, the history of a division, right? Like, that's how big of a, of a moment it was. But, you know, in, in uh, Leon's, uh, you know, defence, you know, it was still set up, you know. I yes. think he's even touched on it, uh, of obviously using that same hand a, as a kick, right? Just send it up. It was never, never to land that punch. It was purely to just dip him straight into that kick, you know, get that kick off beat and slip him into it. So it was a good setup, but... You know, is that going to happen again? I'm sure Usman's ready it, for this, right? Can I just say, if Leon Edwards spent 
four rounds on his back to set up, to set up yeah. that left, oh. left hand, left high kick, then he is a mastermind, okay? That's it, just play, and just play, just play. Yeah, play and he's, got a, he's got a he's poker never face expect this with now. the absolute best of him. No, nah, no, nah, obviously, obviously, I just mean that exact combo, right? Setting up that exact uh, kick, which you've seen a lot of people uh, start to use that now, where they use that same... Same hand as a kick, really just to yeah, obviously slip him straight you, into to that. Are you talking leg. about my combo? Hey. Are you talking about my combo? That is your, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're, you're talking about my signature? I should, we shouldn't talk about it too much, hey, but you know what? <laughs> Everyone's you're right. stealing it from me. Yeah, man, not here I am breaking it down, my bad. <laughs> I mean, actually, even when I did a breakdown of... Um, that kick I did actually I was saying going, yeah, this is uh, something that uh, Rob uses so well yeah, so no, apologies that was, uh, I wasn't right. meant to talk about that <laughs> yeah, I'm already joking I'm already joking. we'll cut this out of the show uh, now it was an <laughs> <laughs> it looks better doing it <laughs> it was an incredible comeback win but let's take a look at our Musashi top 5 now when we brainstormed this list there were so many good ones that missed out but I think we're pretty happy with where we landed number 5 it's Frank Mir when he beat Minotaro the second time Big Nog had him in trouble dropped him and delivered some brutal ground and pound I think Rogue in commentary said it looked as though he was already out but Frank eventually managed to roll, reverse the position, secure the Kimura which actually broke Big Nog's arm right here. First man to knock Minotaro out, UFC 92 back in 2008 and oh. first to submit him as well and oh yeah, you see it cringe right. every time Ooh. you see it right. Coming in at number four, this one happened relatively recently. Alexander Volkov dominated Derek Lewis, stunned him a number of times on the feet, took him down on several occasions as well but <laughs> in true Derek Lewis fashion all it takes is one. 10 seconds left on the clock, knocked Volkov out, and that was it. This is UFC. where the pants came off, huh? Yeah, UFC 229 <laughs> in Vegas. Uh, number three for the middleweight championship, Chael and Anderson, the first time. Chael rocked silver on numerous occasions, but the wrestling and grounded pound is where the American gangster really did the most damage until the final round when Anderson sunk in this triangle arm bar and forced Chael to tap with just under two minutes left on the clock, absolutely. Astonishing how dominant Chow was in that fight, and you know I don't know if anyone was really expecting that to happen, but he got it done in the end. Now I thought this could have been number one, but Matt Hughes versus Frank Trigg the second time way back in 05. Now this fight is already in the Hall of Fame, so Trigg gets him with a low blow that Mario Yamasaki either doesn't see or refuses to penalise. Hughes goes down, Trigg nearly knocks him out, Mario lets it go, Trigg nearly submits him, but Matt Hughes, one of the greatest champions that we've ever seen, picks him up, throws him down and escapes the clutches of defeat with his belt and finishes the fight in the way that Trigg nearly did just moments early. Absolutely remarkable. I mean, we talk about the greatest welterweights uh, of all time and Matthews is certainly on there. And number one, though, really couldn't have been anything else. Whoa. Let's just enjoy it. What a moment. Oh, man. I love this so much. This definitely is the let Yamasaki. Oh, this is, not, this is so good. It's like my favorite exchange I've ever seen. <laughs> How that fight wasn't stopped, but obviously very thankful that it wasn't. It's crazy. It's Dan Ragliotto, the referee. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I can't believe that. Jack Congo getting it done over Pat Barry. A big human being, too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jack Congo is like, what happened? <laughs> he's still a little more weird. He looks when he does he put his hands oh, up he's like, what? where am I? <laughs> oh, what a moment.